Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today for part number seven of our teaching devotion series called Rocks to Remember. And today we're going to talk about some painful stones. Before we do, your scripture verse for the week is John 18, 11, part B, which simply says, go and sin no more. Well, the first of the painful stones we're going to look at today is the hypocrite stones. And we find these in John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Jesus was teaching early one day in the temple with a group of people listening to him. And some religious leaders brought in a woman who had been caught doing some bad things. Let's just say she was dating a man who was married to someone else, since this is a children's church devotional. The religious leaders bragged that they caught this woman sinning against God. They remind Jesus of the law of Moses that said she should be stoned to death for her sin. And stoning to death, they would literally pick up stones and throw them at somebody until they died. That was a horrible, terrible punishment. Knowing that Jesus was merciful, they asked him this to try to trap him, not because they were really interested in the law of God. They tried to trap him into speaking against the law. For a little while, Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. Soon, Jesus stands up and says, Who is without sin among you? Let him throw a stone at her first. And then he stooped down and began to write on the ground again. Well, right at that point, Jesus had spoken with so much wisdom and power that the people realized that they were hypocrites. A hypocrite is simply someone who tries to tell you how to live, but then they don't even live right themselves. And these people that were going to stone this woman realized that they were hypocrites. Each one standing there at that moment realized that they themselves had sinned against God. Maybe not the same thing that the woman had done, but definitely had broken God's law when Jesus spoke with wisdom and power. So the accusers that were going to stone her to death were so convicted, they started to leave one by one from the oldest to the youngest. When they had all left, Jesus stands up and looks at the woman and asks her, where are her accusers? She answers that there are none left and Jesus says, then I don't condemn you either. But then almost everyone these days forgets what Jesus said next. He simply said, now go and sin no more. People forget that a lot of times. See, Jesus is fully able and willing to forgive, but he expects us to leave behind sin and disobedience. Being forgiven of sin doesn't mean we suddenly become perfect and sinless. What it does mean is that because of God's great mercy and love for us, that we need to have a focus of becoming closer and more obedient to God rather than staying in sin, disobedience, and selfishness. In John chapter 3, verse 30, John the Baptist said, I must decrease and Jesus must increase. And that needs to be true in our lives. If we just go on sinning thinking that it's okay because God will forgive us, we really don't love God and we really don't understand forgiveness. God is looking for true faith and love for him, not just religious hypocrisy. Second Chronicles 16. 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. And then number two of the painful stones is the millstone. We see this in Matthew chapter 18 verses 1 through 7. Jesus was teaching about being humble and having simple faith and trust in him. And he goes on to teach that tests of our faith in God and temptation to sin will come in our lives naturally or even through temptation of the devil. But woe, and woe, W-O-E, means bad news. And Jesus says, woe to a person who is the cause of a child or a disciple of Jesus to sin or lose faith. Jesus said it would be better if a millstone was hung around their neck and they'd be thrown into the sea. And a millstone was a a huge round stone that uh, throughout history people have used to grind up grain. And it can weigh anywhere from maybe 70 to 80 pounds to hundreds of pounds. What Jesus is doing, he's painting a picture of the depth of punishment that comes to people who are tempters and discouragers. And boy, does that happen a lot these days. People are doing and teaching all kinds of godless things to kids. They're teaching kids that boys can be girls and girls can be boys or they can be neither a girl or a boy. And we know specifically that Jesus said in the beginning, God created them male and female. Some people may not believe it, but God has an order to his creation and he knows exactly what he's doing. And sometimes people will discourage others in faith. They'll try to get people to quit believing in Jesus, saying that religion is just a crutch or only weak people need some kind of fairy tale faith. Or maybe it's something like a person trying to get someone to go along with them to do something bad. Well, you know, the insurance against the kind of millstone punishment that Jesus talked about is simply to be an encourager of faith in God and holiness. Encourage people to love God and do what is right. Stay true to God's word and the principles that God has given us in his word. And we'll never have to worry about millstone-like pain. So that's it today for some painful stones. We'll get to some more stones of a different type next week. But in the meantime, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Help us to never be hypocrites, but help us to be true to your word and loving to the people that you've placed in our lives. 
lives knowing that vengeance belongs only to you and we're here to be a witness and a testimony to your word and the truth. We love you and thank you today in Jesus' name. Everybody said... Thank you.